AI agents that can autonomously carry out your business processes are coming to Microsoft Copilot. And while we've known this technology is on the radar for a while, we now have learned that for everyone that hasn't been in its private preview, it'll be rolling out to public preview next month at Microsoft Ignite. Let's consider what these tools will do, how they'll get built, the types of workload you'll point them at, and how deliverable the vision Microsoft is painting might actually be in the long term as we dive into our future working alongside Copilot agents. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. Back at Microsoft Build this year, we got our first look at the future of Copilot and Copilot Studio being the building of autonomous and semi-autonomous task or domain specific agents. In the months since, many of these features have been in private preview, but at the London Microsoft AI Tour stop, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella took the opportunity to highlight these features, and it was revealed in an associated blog post that agents in Copilot Studio will be coming to public preview next month. So what exactly does this mean we'll be seeing? Well, first, this is about a rebrand. The primary asset you will publish either to extend Microsoft 365 Copilot or in place of what we previously called a custom Copilot will now become an agent. But second, this also goes beyond a rebrand with new options coming for the builder, like external triggering of an autonomous agent, and a new workflow in your Copilot interface through declarative agents to make it far easier to integrate these tools into your workflow. This compounding of new features on top of a rebrand does make this somewhat confusing though. The example that Jared Spataro walked through in his overview of this technology at the same London AI tour showed us how a Copilot agent might be built. He walked us through an agent inspired by a use case deployed by McKinsey to help manage incoming emails, summarize them and gain understanding, and then route the pertinent details to the right person. All of this is done in the context of Copilot agent, where the fallback is human intervention inside of the Copilot BizChat interface. This has apparently boosted efficiency of this process by 90% and cut down admin overhead by 30%. While well, what was shown off was a very neat workflow, the radical change we should all be excited about is the ability to trigger an agent, or as previously known, a Copilot, using an external event like an email arriving. Outside of that, what we are essentially seeing is a reimagining of how to use existing power platform, particularly Power Automate, assets inside of Copilot Studio to string together things we've been able to do for a while inside this new Copilot-centric user experience model. However, if we break down the elements of his demo in more detail, there are, I think, some other tidbits that are important to understanding just what Microsoft is delivering and isn't delivering with this set of changes. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd hit the like button and perhaps leave a comment to help me get in front of more interested people. Also, if you'd like to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. First, the natural language instructions to the agent are a lot more definitive than simply laying out a general intent. There is a level of specificity that goes beyond just saying, hey, you're gonna receive an email, do this with it. It breaks it down into different actions and what the results of those actions should be. I think the description of this as a loose set of instructions you might give to a human is somewhat disingenuous. This is more like writing an operating procedure to train a new hire. The natural language instructions reference specific actions and when we look at the detail of those actions, they are mostly independent Power Automate flows. This in itself isn't new, we've been able to trigger flows from Copilot Studio for a long while. There's no suggestion here that this agent creation process is independently creating those flows. So the idea that this is as simple as writing a prompt and selecting some actions is kind of sleight of hand on Microsoft's part. It is that simple, but only if those downstream flow-based actions already exist. Otherwise, you need to go out and build them. However, one of the big issues I've found across Copilot extensibility 
is while it has been designed for the Copilot orchestrator to just choose the right plugin or extension based upon your instruction, this actually doesn't work very consistently. A new workflow that allows you to declare the agent you want to use with an app mention and then within that agent purposefully define which actions to use when opens up new possibilities for useful deployment of extensibility options. Within the creator environment for the agent, we have a broad capability to add actions from flows or connectors we would use anywhere in Power Platform, alongside a variety of RAG grounding options. It also appears that the need to create and manage topics as a primary means of defining these services has been reduced in favour of the more complex natural language instructions that you can add into your bot when you create it. This can be seen by topics apparently moving from the overview screen, although still appearing as an option. This drive for further simplicity is really appreciated. It's also important to consider that without really mentioning it, Jared's demo laid a strong foundation for a use case grounded in responsible AI principles. This was dealing with incoming emails and then routing that information internally. The purpose of this agent was not to respond to the external parties who might be put off by interacting with AI. Presumably, the internal party who receives the email has the opportunity to identify any AI-based error before it impacts the customer. There is also a strong demonstration of a human-in-the-loop fallback when the AI cannot complete its task. It was good to see this restrained example rather than something more wowsy, and in my opinion, highlights the type of workload this technology would be most readily suited to right now. The big question I was left with that wasn't really addressed in the presentation or any of the blog posts that I've seen was that of licensing. It's unclear to what extent these sorts of capabilities will be part of the seeded access to Copilot Studio you get with Microsoft 365 Copilot, or which will require the license upgrade to full access to Copilot Studio resources. Even looking at that model, which charges $200 for the first 25,000 messages per month across Copilot Studio agents in your organization, for these sorts of capabilities, that seems a little out of whack. If you jump over to Power Automate licensing, Automated processes accessible to everyone in your organization require at least a Power Automate process license at $150 per flow per month. In a world where I now have a premium features upgrade button inside of Microsoft Excel, I simply will not believe that these features are not going to be another opportunity for a premium upsell until it is laid out in black and white. With so much going on in the world of productivity AI, working out how to get the best from this technology can be time consuming and confusing. I help businesses like yours with their co-pilot adoption journey, from advisory help on the selection of the right AI tools, to technical advice with their implementation, to leadership and end user training, and support with extending its capabilities across your operations. Whether you are just thinking about which AI solution to choose, or if you're already in the midst of using Copilot, I will help you to maximize your return from your investment in AI technologies. Check out the links down below and get in touch to start working with me. By adding these new exciting features on top of a general rebrand of its existing features, with everything in the Copilot extensibility world now effectively called an agent, Microsoft has once again succeeded in making something that should be super simple to explain really tough to. The pertinent point is that agents with autonomy will just be one of the options, and not every agent you see in Copilot will be independently triggerable. Some will just give you access to new skills or data in the context of your chat. On the other hand, while an external event trigger does indeed make a Copilot agent run autonomously, I'm not sure this tightly process-bounded approach is necessarily what everyone means when they talk about an autonomous AI future, a digital replacement for a personal assistant that could just proactively turn its capabilities to whatever you need. This tooling, for now at least, is not. However, I do think that with capabilities like these coming to Copilot, we are reaching a point where AI enablement is becoming a necessity for any business that wants to stay competitive. All organizations have repeating processes that are slowing people down and stopping employees from dedicating their highest level skills to getting things done. 
and Copilot agents or similar technology from other vendors are going to be the readily deployed solutions to these scenarios. Microsoft threw out various metrics from their own internal deployment of Copilot. A 12% speed increase in resolving customer service issues, 42% greater accuracy in responding to employee HR queries. And while these might be the figures Microsoft has given us to help sell their tool, there is a growing body of more independent research that shows that well-managed AI adoption is indeed effective across a wide variety of business scenarios. If you ended 2023 with an AI plan for 2024, then you were probably ahead of the curve. But I think we're now getting to the point where if you're ending 2024 without an AI plan for 2025, you're at risk of falling behind your competition. If you're in a role where it makes sense, you should be actively investigating how tools like these can give you an edge. When I think back to the first time I opened Copilot Studio after getting access to Microsoft 365 Copilot at the end of last year, where we are now is just on a different level. The Copilot extensibility model is, in my view, the most complete vision from any major vendor on how to AI enable everyday users with tools that are relevant from one end of their job to the other. There's still big opportunity for improvement, for simplification, and for more nuanced integration of the capabilities of generative AI into getting things done. But nonetheless, I'm excited about Copilot's agentic future, and you should be too. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.